So often, I hear life described as a series of ups and of downs, like a roller coaster taking you through the good times and the bad times. But recently, it seems like we've had a lot more of the bad than the good, but every few years, we get a little bit of relief. Things start sloping back upwards and getting better. And sometimes, just sometimes, that relief comes in the form of a new Ed Sheeran album. So the past couple of weeks, I have been obsessing over Ed Sheeran's new album, Subtract, and I thought it would be fun to make a tier list to rank for you the best songs and the slightly less best songs on this album. Because honestly, this is an album I really have thoroughly enjoyed and will continue to enjoy. Probably don't expect any F tiers on this tier list. This is mostly me just enjoying music. So if you're in for that, grab some popcorn, grab a loved one, sit back and enjoy. I'm gonna start us out here with the first track of the album, Boat. Now, Boat is a song about enduring hard things and suffering. And that would be what I would say the theme of the album is, is suffering and making it through, whether that's suffering in relationships or health problems or dealing with death, especially death. There's a lot of songs that really talk about it. So if you're going through that, then I think this album will really connect with you. Let's give a listen to Boat. And I think it's really important while going through this album to listen to it in order. So that's the order I'm going to take the tier list. A lot of it builds, and Boat is definitely a great introduction to what this album's about. They say that all scars heal, but I know Maybe I won't but the way This shot is actually really cool in the music video. The water coming over him while he's moving in real time. It's nice. Oh man, we're going straight to S tier to start this baby out. Honestly, Boat has some of my favorite lyrics on the whole album. Like every line I could point to and tell you why I like it. But I think my favorite is probably the last line of the chorus is the, they say that all, sc all scars will heal, but maybe I won't, but the waves aren't gonna break my boat or waves won't break my boat. Anyhow, Boat is such an incredible song. Please go listen to it. I think you'll like it. In fact, I think you'll like it so much that you'll quickly find your way onto the second track of the album, Saltwater. Saltwater is another song that I think lyrically is absolutely beautiful. It's a little more vague than Boat is, but what I get from it is that he's reflecting on things he's gone through and kind of saying, what if, or this is what I wish I had done or hadn't done and regret. So it's definitely an awesome one to maybe read the lyrics while you listen to. Musically, Saltwater is a bigger track than Boat, but kind of in the way Happier is big, where the vocals are very intense, but the music is actually pretty gentle behind. So there's a lot of intensity in the space there. So it's an awesome song. And also I think the melody on the chorus is just super unique. So let's check it out. Come and kiss me salt water. Oh, finally I feel it. Three or four degrees. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and give salt water an A tier from me. I love this song. Hey there, Joel from the future editing this video. I don't know what was going through my head, I'm sorry. Saltwater is definitely an S tier. I gave it an A tier, it was a mistake. I just, I need to fix this right now. So for the rest of this video, you'll see that in A tier, but just remember, mm, S tier material, okay? Sounds good, thanks everybody, bye. But I think I like some other ones just a little bit more. This one is definitely on the fence. Right now, I'm feeling it's just a little less than Boat in some of the other ones. So I'm gonna drop it into A tier, but still an incredible one. Now is probably a decent time to mention that there is actually a visual experience to go along with the entire Subtract album. The visuals are pretty cool, but for me personally, that's not how I tend to listen to music. I will probably listen to this album with my eyes closed. Would you look at that? Our next song is actually called Eyes Closed. It's like I did it on purpose. Eyes Closed is a song about grieving someone who's died. It talks about, you know, wishing they were still there, still expecting that person to show up. And I think he does just a really good job expressing this. It's the first real upbeat kind of like poppy song on the whole album, but it's almost a little funny to me because it is so serious and sad while combined with like a pretty like high energy beat. This is also the first track on the album where we get that classic Ed Sheeran like vocal fry scream and it's just beautiful. I mean, I really love this song. I totally understand why it was the first single from the album. I know it's a bad idea. How can I help myself? Cause I'm here alone Just dancing with my eyes closed Cause everywhere I look I still see you Oh, this here is my favorite verse Illusion is here again And I think you'll come home soon But what brings me right back in Then 
it's only me that's in this room. We got yet another S tier. I'm sorry, this album kicks off just guns blazing with great tracks. So eyes closed, it's absolutely an S tier for me. I think this is a song that in a few years when I go listen to Ed Sheeran's music, I'll have this one like ready to go. But we must move on from eyes closed and just like we must move on, life goes on. Life Goes On is another song about death and just talking about how after someone's gone, life is still happening. Things have changed, but some things haven't changed. You're just not there for it. So I actually really like the placement of this song right after Eyes Closed because Eyes Closed is one of the most upbeat songs on the whole album. And then we have a nice glide back down to Life Goes On, which is one of the most stripped back on the albums. In fact, I think this song is mostly just acoustic guitar, strings, like a tiny bit of piano dabbled in and some bass, but as you'll hear, it is really gentle. So let's jump in and take a listen. I am so afraid. I need you now to tell me how. How my life goes on with you, God. I hope easy come, hard go. Then life goes on. Man, throughout the last few years, he has written so many great songs about um, loss and grieving, and this is just another one. I'm sorry, this list is starting out just with banger after banger, but I have to give Life Goes On S tier to you. Anything less would just be a betrayal of how good that song is, but I promise there there is some negativity coming towards this. There is some, but like the top of this album is so good. Good. Our next song up is a departure from the sadness and it is called Dusty. Now, to be honest, I listened to Dusty several times and I really wasn't sure what it was about. It kind of came off to me as like a song maybe to one of his daughters and it's like pretty happy and a nice change of pace, but I was pretty unsure. So I did some Googling so you don't have to. Dusty is a song apparently inspired by Dusty Springfield's song, Dusty in Memphis. That's a little bit of an ego trip, dude. But apparently Ed was inspired about this song one morning while he was going through his wife's health problems as well as losing his friend and just sitting there with his daughter and felt that just had a moment of kind of freedom and mental clarity. And so... This is kind of a nice, refreshing song from a lot of the early, like, hardships of this album. So, let's give a listen to Dusty. Day is breaking into powder blue. Drop the needle on Dusty. Guys, it just occurred to me when he says drop the needle on Dusty, it's the needle of the record player. This song just went way over my head. I don't know why. It it completely missed me. I was like, what is drop the needle on? Like, I'm looking for, like, a metaphor there. Like, what does drop the needle on Dusty mean? I was like, I just, I guess I just don't get this song. It's too clever for me. It's the needle. The needle of the record player. When I saw it visually again, I was like, oh, yeah, you dropped the needle. <laughs> we were lost within a stormy ocean. This video is really cute. Coming up is a really, really nice key change. Alrighty, I think Dusty is a really cute song. That music video with uh, him making pancakes with his daughter, or maybe an actress, but I'm gonna guess this is his real daughter. Uh, it's also super, super duper cute. So I'm gonna give Dusty a B tier, which I feel almost is mean because everything else has been so high. Like, B is a good ranking. It's still a song I like. It's Definitely its placement is perfect in the album, but I think I just like it slightly less. I really love the key change in the song. It really does it for me, but Dusty, there it is, B tier. Alrighty, we're moving back into sad territory. This one is probably slightly less sad, but this is End of Youth. I think this is a really cool song, and more than any other track on the whole album, and maybe even the last like two albums, this has the sound of something he might do on Plus, like way back in the day. Now, not necessarily lyrically, I don't think, but the like sound and the vibe of the song really reminds me of that album, especially the way he raps. So I like this song a lot. I love how he continually changes the rhythm of how he's kind of rap singing over and over again. It makes it really interesting. And it's one of those songs that gets to the end and you're like, oh man, I was, I was really feeling it. I want, I want more. 
I've been depressed since you left Tried to fill the hole with wine Stop the drugs when she came Clean my act up overnight If you each with no reply I'll see you when I see you, man Is this the end of our life? When pain starts taking over I just don't know if I Okay, hold on. I, I know this is hard in music videos, but this really, really doesn't look like he's singing it. This close up on his face. It looks like he's like, I just don't know if I could ever just let it go. It really looks strange. And then the dark gets in and that's the end of you. <sighs> That's gonna be just another S tier from me. At this exact moment, I don't know if this will be the case as time goes on. At this exact moment, this is my favorite track on the whole album. I am just really feeling it. I, I love the lyrics. I love the rhythms uh, throughout all the different rap parts. Ah, oh, just... Man, it's a great song. Go listen to End of Youth. Okay, next up, we got a pretty short, sweet love song. This song is called colorblind and colorblind is to me almost like a very traditional love song it's got that like six eight kind of swing to it and especially the chorus makes me think of like old music but not in like a bad way but like in a kind of reminiscent way if you listen to the joker and the queen off of the equals album the chess in that is like color in this song it is just a huge pile of color metaphors and expressions and all topped off with a very beautiful chorus. So, this is a great song. Let's uh, let's hop into it. I keep falling deeper in dark blue, brighter than white. Maybe we'll just paint the night colorblind. Colorblind for me is pretty dang cute. I think right now I'm in a very much liking it stage. I'm going to give this an A because that's just what I'm feeling right now. Just listening to it, I'm like, ah, oh, this song's great. I don't know. It's getting an A. I have a feeling this is a song that is like teetering on B tier for me. So maybe it'll find itself like in a month kind of slipping down a notch for me. But for right now, colorblind, you've earned yourself an A tier. Next up, we got Curtains. Curtains is the most aggressive go hard song on the whole album. Sort of like End of Youth, it has constantly changing rhythms. And to me, that again, just makes it super interesting and has like really aggressive drums, electric guitar kicks in, and it's just like a true like banger, but kind of in like the early 2000s, like kind of punk rock kind of banger way. So it's a cool one. Let's listen to some. Also, Curtains is a song about exposing your true self or showing yourself during pain, Can maybe. You pull the curtains, let me see the sunshine. I think I'm done with my hiding place and you found me anyway. Hide and see. Can you pull the curtains? Let me see the sunshine. I think I'm done with my hiding place and you found me anyway. Oh man, curtains. I don't know how it belongs on an acoustic album, but. It is just such a killer song, man. Before I listened to that right now, I was thinking this song, I'm probably gonna give a B tier. And now after listening to it, I have to give it an A tier. He does such a good job in Curtains of really explaining and putting into words the feeling of like being closed up and like not being willing to share and open yourself up and share your pain and like suffering with other people and like putting like even the words in there like, hey, you know, like it's okay, you don't have to carry this alone. And then the chorus, like the the, the verses are so tense, They're, but then the chorus just opens up big and it's like this like big release. So you ever just have something fall like across your house and you're like, am, am I like about to get murdered? Cause it's terrifying. <laughs> Next up is a song called Borderline. Borderline is a song about feeling like in this middle in between, between maybe good things and bad things. I would imagine, I don't know specifically that maybe he's kind of contrasting like the good things of like starting his family and having kids and like a great marriage that he's super happy about. But like while his wife was going through some medical stuff um, at the time and like a lot of suffering. So 
Um, and like his friend, of course, like I think everyone kind of knows at this point, Ed Sheeran lost like his best friend. Um, so kind of dealing with like that grief, but like good. So like kind of being torn between like these good and bad and like feeling like you're slipping into darkness and like depression, anxiety, but also like wanting to like reach towards like the good. It's a pretty stripped back song, but it does have some drums that kind of kick in there. Super like low pass, like muffled kind of sound. And they're just kind of there to like give some energy, but I think it works really well. So let's give it some listens. Sadness always finds an end. Look, that's like such a simple way um, to describe being sad. That works. It's so effective. Such good lyrics. Right now. Borderline is such a good song. For me, it's not an S tier, but I think it would be almost an A tier. It just does such a good job of like talking about sadness and like how it kind of messes everything up. So there is actually something I don't like about this song. I like Ed Sheeran's falsetto. He sings high beautifully. To me, this one, I just wish it was like a half step lower. I don't know. I don't love how he sounds on like the last bridge. I'm just going to play it again. Uh, that way everyone can hear it. But like, I, I don't know. Usually I love it when he sings high. He tends to sing high all the time. And, and maybe this is just my jealousy coming out because when I sing along with it, I can't actually sing this very well. So maybe it's just my jealousy coming out, but I just wish it was like just a little bit lower. Is this part here. And mostly for my jealousy, but also because I think I would have preferred it a little lower. I'm, Giving it a B tier. That's right. You can't force me into no A tier, although it really probably should be an A tier, but you can't force it. Uh, this is my list. Our next song up is called Spark. Spark is a song about a relationship falling apart or going through some turmoil and trying to hold on to that love or that spark to keep it going. The chorus is like, we can burn down everything we have, but I hope we hold on to that spark. So it's a pretty cool song. Probably not my absolute favorite lyrically on the album, but I still think he does. A great job. The vocals on this one in particular, I think, are a little bit of a standout on the album for being pretty good. So uh, let's give it a listen. How I wish you wouldn't say that. There are things you can't take back. We'll build a fire and And we hope the spark survives. I feel like the beat up piano aesthetic has never not been popular. It's always like, there somehow. I like it. I do think it's cool. It's fun, but it's probably not my favorite thing in the world. So I'm just going to drop Mr. Spock here to a C tier. Oh, it's our first C tier. I, I don't, I don't like doing that. I feel like kind of bad. Now C is not bad. I think a C is a passing grade. So it's still a good song. Now that I finished justifying my choices to you, the next song up is Vega. Vega is a song that when I first heard it, I kind of suspected was about hey, people kind of treat him differently because uh, he's famous and going through problems, but we all kind of share the same problems. And, you know, we all go through suffering and pain and we still feel it. I kind of thought maybe that's what the song is about. And then I found a tweet from him. The lyrics are kind of a nod to people seeing me as a star in some ways. And Vegas is one of the brightest stars in the sky. But a star is a burning ball of gas that is just like hell. So if I'm a star, sometimes it's going to burn like hell to be Vega. At first, I really didn't like that tweet. I thought it came off like pretentious. I don't, I thought about it. I don't think that was the goal to be like, I'm a star and I burn bright. But um, I think it does kind of relate to everyone, though it's hard to connect with the song on, on that level. I almost wish I didn't know that because I think the song is easy to connect to like, hey, we all have, we share problems and we share pain and like we look at each other differently uh, because one person maybe has money or one person has a job or like, you know, my suffering was worse than this one. Let's give it a listen. Rain keeps beating on the rooftop, muddying the gloss, but God, I love the sound of heaven. So light up the night, we were made to be stars, but it burns like hell. To be vague. My favorite thing is actually the chords here. I think it goes to the five chord uh, and then it stays on the five chord when the chorus starts. And it has this like very like, oh, we're in the chorus now sound. I think you'll hear it even if you're not into music. You'll be like, oh, that is interesting. Hey, I see you smile again. This war we've got to win. Keep it in 
And that is Vega. I think it's musically a really cool song, but probably not my favorite lyrically on the whole album. So right where I put it at the start there, I'm going to leave it in C tier right next to Spark. It's still good stuff. I just think it's slightly less good than the other things. Sycamore, our next song, tells the story of Ed and his wife uh, finding out that she had a cancerous tumor um, while she was pregnant with their child and going through the process and the doctors. And it's kind of a hard song to talk about because it's it's truly one of those songs that's like a story front to back. I, I'm almost going to have trouble playing clips from it because it's just like you, you need to hear the whole thing as a whole. But uh, as someone who's gone through some of this process, not for my wife, it's very good and uh, pretty accurate too. I think a lot of the feelings of like, uh, getting news from doctors and stuff. I think Sycamore is a really cool song. You'll hear when I play some of it, the strings are really tense um, and kind of painful, but in a dramatic way. So let's give it a listen. Right now in the waiting room, emotions running wild. Worried about my lover and I'm worried about her child. And part of me was always in denial. It's gonna take a little while. We're in the And that is Sycamore. Um, I'm going to give that one an A tier. It is just, I don't know what to say. It's just great. It makes me want to sit here and cry. Our next song is another very strong vocal song. I think the vocals in this one are some of the best on the whole album. It's called No Strings. And it is a song about fighting through hard times or fighting with a disagreement with uh, your, your loved ones. So, and pushing through that uh, because of love. So, Maybe also connected uh, to his wife's tumor and everything, uh, working through that. So it's a pretty beautiful song. I really like a little later in the song before the bridge, the drums kick in. And I think that part's uh, one of my favorite parts. So let's give it a listen. Trouble is then repaired. Yeah, this is no strings. You are who I love. It's just quote. Bridge, man. All righty. No Strings, I think, is uh, really beautiful. It's just a really nice, like, beautiful commitment. So for me, I'm going to drop that one in B tier because I, I like it a lot, but I think I like everything in A tier just a little bit more, which I guess why you rank things. I don't really need to explain that to you. Time for the last track on the regular version of the album. We're going to do four more because I'm going to do the deluxe tracks that were included, but the Hills of... Aberfeldy. How to pronounce Aberfeldy? Pronounce names.com. Th thank you. Aberfeldy. Aberfeldy. Next up, we got the last track on the normal album. We got four more because of the bonus tracks. Don't worry. This song is called The Hills of Aberfeldy. And The Hills of Aberfeldy is a pretty cool song. It starts out like an old school like hymn or spiritual and then kind of evolves from there. It's probably not my favorite style in the world, but this song apparently, is about a place called Aberfeldy. And that's in Scotland. And so I don't know about this place at, at all. I don't have a personal connection to it. So I'm sure if you're Scottish and maybe you've been to Aberfeldy, this might be really good and meaningful. I don't know. Oh, leaves are covered in snow And the water's frozen Sounds Scottish to me. <laughs> I don't know. You will never find another heart that wants you more than mine. The Hills of Aberfeldy is probably even more enhanced if you know of this and have been there. But for me, I'm going to have to give The Hills of Aberfeldy a C tier. Okay, we've moved into bonus track territory. We got four of these and we're just going to work through them here. Now, a lot of times on albums, bonus tracks, garbage. They're like this extra thing. And when I heard Wildflowers, I was a little like, I don't know, am I about to have four tracks I wish I didn't have? That did not happen. So a little bit of a spoiler here. I'm a fan of these tracks. So let's jump into them. Wildflowers is the first song. I kind of spoiled that I like it a little bit less. 
I find this song a little difficult to interpret. And I Googled a little bit, but I couldn't find a good meaning. I think it's maybe just a song talking to his kid about them growing up into who they are going to be and what they're going to do in the world. I, I don't know. So if you know what Wildflowers is about like definitively or have a reference, please tell me in the comments because I don't know. This song does have a pretty chill instrumental in the middle and also some very nice harmonies. I finds the clothes that you, you were born to run and run till you find your That is Wildflowers. I'm going to leave it exactly where I put it. Listening to it now, I like it a little more than I thought I did. Like, the beat's kind of nice. That last instrumental is mwah. And then the harmonies at that ending is Our next song up is called Stoned. And I think stoned is a topic probably a lot of people in their like 20s can really relate to, maybe even like moving into your 30s. It's a song about seeing everyone in your life kind of moving on. So for example, like people getting married, having kids or having great careers or whatever. However you've seen, you think of as moving on, they've, they've surpassed you and feeling like you're just stuck, like you haven't moved. So I think this is a actually a really sick track, and he does such a good job with the lyrics representing that feeling. And on top of that, there's also, you know, being stoned, seeing other people doing, you know, living life, and like, you're stoned. I mean, it's kind of like the sequel to Drunk off Plus. He's, he's come full circle. We had drunk all those years ago. Now we can be drunk and stoned. Save me, colors and rays. Nothing will fill up the space. I'm drowning under the waves. And all my friends have settled and grown and then there's me here dancing alone am i breathing into my detriment i'll keep bleeding and i'll be stoned that is stoned ah i like stoned so much honestly to me i've got to get that at a tier it's kind of teetering on s to be honest it's it's probably, if I'm honest, like not as amazing as End of Youth. So that's that's kind of the one. Like End of Youth and Boat are like really high for me right now. So I don't think I like it as much as those, but probably everything else in A tier. I would love to see like a really hard rock version of this song or like an acapella version of this song. I don't know which I want more, but I, I kind of want it. I feel like the chorus really has like the vibe of like something that could be aggressive. Like, oh, my friends are married and gone. The then there's me just alone. Also, it's kind of hard to sing and beat on your chest. The next song up is a song called Toughest. And Toughest is another song about his wife going through uh, her sickness and her treatment. And it's such a cool song. It does such a he does such a great job of like having very real lyrics in this one. This one is more written about his wife and talking about how strong she was through all of it. And also just describing situation throughout the verses, like the whole process. And it's like a very raw lyrical song. Like it's not, there's not a lot of metaphor mixed up in there, unless the whole thing is a metaphor and I'm missing something. But not a lot of that. It's just like, here's what happened. And it's very good. The song musically kind of has Castle on the Hill vibes. It's not like it, but it's like it relative to this whole album. Kind of got that like four on the floor, uh, driving chorus, pretty high energy. So I think this is a song that a lot of people would be fond of. So let's check it out. I don't know what to think. The work I threw the day. The doctor said it's cancer. And the baby's on the way. Life changes in. You're the type to defeat the hardest obstacles put in front of you. All right, toughest. I have one gripe, literally one gripe about this song. I don't know why this is a bonus track. I don't know if there just wasn't confidence in it, but to me, this is like closer material. This one is all the vibes. This should have been it. Like either cut something from the first 12 and put it on the bonus, but this one is track 12. But I just want this one to be track 12 or I guess track 14 of the original album. That would have been such a perfect 
ending. I mean, just listen to how the song starts. I don't know what to think. This is this is closer vibes. I don't know. Maybe he didn't want to end on that note, but either way, I think Toughest is an amazing song. I hope this one ends up becoming a single because I just think it's a great track. Uh, I know it probably won't be for everyone because it's kind of like sad, and I feel like sad stuff never does amazing on the radio, but I'm dropping that thing in A tier right now. Man, our tiers were so balanced, and I've just ruined them with the last two. Finally, the last bonus track on the whole album, Moving. And Moving is, to me, a little bit of a strange note to end it on, but it does have that very stripped back vibe that so much of the album has had. It is just mostly acoustic uh, and strings and then maybe some bass and stuff like normal. But this is a song I've listened to and read the lyrics, and I've had just a little trouble interpreting it too. It's kind of like a breakup song, like moving on from something, like something's not going to hold back. But I don't know. The more I read it, the more I'm questioning, like, is it about drugs? Um, like moving on from drugs, kind of talked about like in a breaking up way or maybe from alcohol. Uh, I don't know. I can't really tell if it's like actually a person breakup or like more about substances. I feel like substances would kind of fit the vibe of the album more than like, here's a random breakup song. Not that that would be bad because it's a good song, but I feel like that would almost fit the album more if it was about substances, but I'm not entirely sure. I looked around and I could also not find an answer. Don't really know, but if you know, let me know. And then we could both know. Come back. It's like we never even had that. Every moment when you took my joy away and go back to how it was before you came. Start moving on. Okay, again, maybe this is just my own jealousy coming out, but I feel like this is a song that could just be a little lower. It's it's not bad. It's not like he doesn't sound great singing where he's singing. He does. But for me, I hear the chorus and I'm like, man, I, I almost wish it was like had a little lower, a little more warmth to the voice. Um, like the, the second line of the chorus kind of sticks out to me, like this part here. I feel I don't know. Again, I'm not saying like it's garbage and terrible by any means. It's just kind of meh for me. I don't know. I wish it was a little bit lower. And for that reason, Ed, you've kicked yourself out of A tier. Actually, not really. This song for me, I think is a pretty cool song, but for me, it's not an A tier. It's a B tier. Kind of fits in that category there with Borderlines, Dusty, pretty good stuff, but not, not my favorite. Alrighty, that has been the official tier list of Subtract by Ed Sheeran. Take one more look at it. If any of your friends try and come to tell you Vega's the best song on the album, you can say no. Definitively, it is worse than these other tracks because Joel said it was so. I do think it's funny how grouped they are. I'm like, I like these four songs about the same, then these six, and then four and four. So it's a very balanced tier list, but nothing really fell below. Hey there, Joel from the future again, and I just wanted to butt in on myself and give you guys a summary of my thoughts on the album as a whole. I think Subtract is an amazing album, and it really goes to show a lot of the experience and songwriting skill that Ed has developed over the years. And in some ways, I feel like this is the strongest album in a lot of ways. The lyrics to these songs both like demonstrate like a strong ability to write like abstract ideas and like create like great metaphors and like express feeling, but also the ability to like tell stories in a really raw form and just like tell details in a creative way. Like telling a story about just like being in a hospital room could be completely boring, but he has such a creative artistic way to put that in lyrics. And so songwriting wise, it is really strong. On top of that, I think the vocals are maybe his best vocal performance on any album. There's a couple of things that maybe I wish would have been done differently, but Man, he's just like such a strong vocalist. I feel like if you go back to like Plus, he's always been a good singer, but like it's just on another level now. He's just one of my favorite voices in music. So, but if I had one criticism of the album, it would be that several of the songs have an instrumental to them, but so rarely are the instrumentals that exciting. Like typically they're just more of an atmosphere kind of sounds. And I didn't even put most of them in this video, so you'll need to go listen to them yourself. They're not my favorite thing in the world, and that's totally fine. I don't think the lack of melodies on the instrumentals really makes the album good or bad. It's just something that I would have liked to hear more of personally because I'm a fan of that, but the only two that really stuck with me at the end of it were the one in Curtains and the one in Wildflowers. 
To me, Subtract is just a wonderful album. I think he just does a great job of telling stories and expressing really complicated emotions and situations through new and really creative melodies and rhythms. It's kind of cool. The melodies in this album have that nostalgic feeling a lot where you're like, you feel like this might be a song you know, but it's a new song and the lyrics are really great. So definitely give Subtract a listen. It's going to be a favorite, I think, for me. I love it. So I'm going to send it back to Past Joel to wrap up this video. Again, this is an album that I thoroughly have enjoyed and I will probably continue to enjoy more and more as we go on here. So hopefully, just like I've enjoyed Subtract, you've enjoyed listening to me talk about Subtract. And if you got to this point in the video and you're like, oh, you're so wrong. This Dusty is the best song on the album and it should be up in S tier. Let me know your reasons. I'm very willing to be convinced. But before you do that, get subscribed because pretty soon I'm going to be doing a tier list of every Ed Sheeran song. Everything from plus, multiply, divide, equals, this album again, once I give it some time to soak in. And then he actually has some other songs that has been released outside of labels. So I'm gonna be doing a tier list of everything Ed Sheeran has published, listening to all of them and ranking them. It's going to be a massive video. I actually recently did this with Owl City and the video is about two hours, but I recorded for like five, five and a half hours. So. It was crazy. Anyways, I do really hope you have enjoyed this video and that it's been a good time to sit back, relax, and listen to some Ed Sheeran music. I also do music on my channel. So if you want to check out one of my songs, click right here. I'm going to give you a cover of Celestial that I did recently. It's cool. It's got cute Pokemon animations by my friend. I think it's a great place to jump in. I also do some original music and tons of other loop pedal covers by other artists. So if you're interested, it would mean a lot if you would go check it out and let me know what you think. So thank you so much, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.